Welcome back and on today's video we're going to talk about Lepfer shocks. Lepfer, Lepfer shocks have evolved a long ways in the last couple of years and today we're going to discuss I guess how we got there. So stay tuned but let's first take care of a little business. If you could subscribe um, there's a there's a link in the corner if you could subscribe to our channel <clears throat> it'll help us grow. If you can like these videos, share them, comment, hit the notification button. These are all things that will improve the output of YouTube's uh, algorithm. So if you could do these things for us, uh, I'd sure appreciate it. So let's get to the video. Today's video is left rear shocks. Um, left rear shock has changed a lot in the last couple of years. Um, it's, it's become much stiffer uh, of a product. And the, the, the base knowledge of the shock, and we're going to do a couple other videos that discuss uh, some different stuff or go into a little more details um, of the current shock we're doing. But the left rear shock was really designed around the fact that we always had the, the premise that the driver got the car in on the corner. So it was the driver's responsibility to get the car in the corner. Well, then we started trying to hold the car up with brakes and gas pressure and spring preload. It's the driver's responsibility to hold the car up. It's the shock's responsibility to get the car off. So driver in, shock off. Well, and as I've said in some other videos, I've been pretty hard-headed uh, about the change. Uh, but we are changing, okay? And I do think if we can help a driver get the car into the corner and the shock can help get the car in the corner and our racing's changed but I think if we can help him get the car in the corner then I think his getting the car out of the corner is better because our corner entry got better so I think where we improve in one we might hurt a little in the other but I think the overall outcome is better for the racer so we are going to build stiffer left rear shocks and I'm going to explain a little of that our current shock that we build <clears throat> is a left rear one, okay? One means that it wasn't just a standard old uh, eight compression, two rebound, or ten compression, two rebound. It has a modified bleed system in it. And that modified bleed system creates a low speed, okay? So we have a little low speed nose. And a left rear one is built in a 40, a 50, a 60, and a 75. Those are the low speed numbers. The high speed numbers are 350, 400, 450, 500, 550 uh, to 650. Okay, each one of the high speed numbers can can go along with the low speed numbers. So, for an example, you can get a 4400 or a 4500, or you can get a 5400 and a 5500. Those are pretty popular pieces. Um, all of the dash ones, all of the left or dash one, the family falls into a bleed total amount or a bleed system that is relatively the same. Okay, uh, as the high speed goes up, you know, the 350, 400, 450, so does the gas pressure. Okay, uh, the this shock was designed to. You know, get the car up on the bars, get the car out of the corner. Try to help the car into the corner, okay? But it has enough bleed in it to be able to cross stiffness and roughness on the racetrack um, to get the car off the corner. So it still is probably at the higher levels than it needs to be. A 4350 at 150 pounds of gas in a dry slick condition is about as much shock as the car or the tire, say, like a G60 tire can handle. Okay, so as we get stiffer, we're going to sacrifice more traction on exit. This is where options that we have available for the shocks come into play. Okay, the new shock we're calling a left rear two. The bleed system in it is um, more than half the size of a standard left rear one. Uh, the left rear 2 is currently being built in a 400 configuration at 300 PSI. 
and we're currently working on a little softer version. Now, the, the low speed stiffness, the rod force, the, the, uh, just being able to push the shock in by hand, so stiff that you can't do it. But that part of the shock is creating a lot of force that requires a lot of gas. So the shock may not, at 400 pounds, sound like the biggest thing on the market, but it's super stiff. It'll hold the car up. And, and what we're doing to test these is what we call a drop test. Okay, so a lifter 1, 40, 50 in that range, has a total bleed system of about 90 thousandths. Okay, so we do use a bleed shim. Uh, you, you, you'll see that in some other videos, but if you total up the total bleed on them shocks, it's, it's 90. On a left rear 2, it's right at 30. So the bleed is, has been reduced, you know, in, in two, uh, two thirds. So it's a lot stiffer. And the way we've been testing them here is on a drop test, okay? So we've created a drop test and a pull test, okay? And we'll go over it in more detail in another video, so stay tuned. But a drop test is a device we built that we can put a shock in, a left rear, and we can drop load on this shock and measure its travel over distance, okay? The travel distance on the drop test is five inches. Uh, the time on a left rear one, dash 40, 50, 60, 75, is roughly 10 seconds. Uh, the drop test over five inches on a left rear two is roughly 22 seconds. So you can see that the left rear two has um, a lot more stiffness in it. You know, uh, the drop test is designed to carry a certain amount of weight. It's not as much as the current weight of the car on that corner. You know, it's not six, seven hundred pounds that it's carrying. Uh, it's carrying about 380, 350, 380, and we feel like this is a good number to simulate a car that's semi on throttle uh, where the driver's trying to hold the car up on gas, you know, uh, because that's really what holds the car up is the gas pedal. So without gas, the car is going to, not, not gas in the shock, throttle. Without throttle in the car, the car is going to drop. So, um, our drop test is designed around 385 pounds of load <clears throat> dropped over five inch distance and timed over that distance. Uh, what and what makes the difference between these two shocks is the amount of bleed. So if, and I think I'll do a just, um, well, no, we won't do just a shock video. This is, I guess, going to be that shock video. But, you know, a left or one, Dash 40, 50, 60, 75. The high speeds from 350 to 550 to 650. Um, we don't do the 650 very often. We do it a little bit. But the left rear 1, dash 40, 550 is a drivable shock. Okay. This used to be, you know, when we went 6400, this was as stiff as any UMP shock we used to build. Uh, that was a stiff shock. Okay, so in today's market, it's not. It's it's uh, it's a medium, a stiff shock. Okay, so left rear one is kind of the standard, what we call standard old school shock. Left rear two is new school shock. Um, the new school shock is about twice as stiff. Okay, and because of the stiffness, <clears throat> we're going to use some of our other technology we have. Uh, we have. Position sensitive bypass or position sensitive bleed system. <clears throat> and that bleed system allows us to put bleed where we need it and it allows us to adjust the amount of bleed where we need it. So, in a left rear two with bypass, and I will do a video for that, be looking for it. It's going to come out probably early next week. Um, but a left rear shock with bypass will, um, will uh, give the car ability to get through some of the holes that are on exit. So if, if the racetracks, you know, like our, our current track has a little bit of dip if you're down low. So the car's got a little bit of hop to it. 
The stiffer the shock is, the more the tire absorbs this stuff. So adding bypass or a bleed system in the shock that, not in the piston, it's not an SRT, it's a bleed system in the shock. We used to do this more, then we started using the SRT piston a lot more. Uh, so the bypass has kind of taken second fiddle, but now we're going to introduce the bypass back. Uh, Electro 2 with an SRT and a bypass means the bypass gets you through a full hike. The car is probably going to stay at hike, but anywhere in the travel, the SRT piston works. So this is just a short video on the left rears. Uh, we've got left rear 1. That's kind of the old school. Left rear 2 is kind of the new school. Left rear 1 is, is semi-stiff and left rear 2 is super stiff. So if you're ordering shocks, that's, that's kind of the way it goes. Um, remember, if you can help us out with subscribing, like, like our channel, um, hit the notification bell, and we'll keep you up to date when we do more videos, okay? As always, God bless you, we love you, and we'll see you at the racetrack.